Jessica. Dang! How does she do that? Underneath the muscle, there is a coarse sheath called the epimysium. Groups of skeletal muscle fibers are bound, to, bound together by connective tissue. This is called the paramysium. The muscle fibers are covered by the delicate connective tissue called the endomysium. Inside the muscle fibers are bundles of very fine fibers that are called the myofibrils that extend along skeletal muscle fibers. The myofibrils are composed of finer fibers that are, that are the thick and thin my, myofilaments. The sarcomere is a segment of the myofibril between the two successive Z-lines. Motor neurons and motor implants connect to form a neuromuscular junction. Is where the neurotransmitter molecules, molecules transmit signals. This happens when nerve impulses reach the end of a motor neuron fiber. Then small vesicles release acet acetylcholine into the synaptic plug. Acetylcholine molecules diffuse swiftly across the microscopic gap, and the acetylcholine molecules contact the sarcolemma on the muscle fiber. When the contact is made, it stimulates acetylcholine receptors and thereby starting an ele electrical impulse in the sarcolemma. This process is called the excitation of the sarcolemma. A temporary electro electrical imbalance, which is known as an impulse, is conducted over the sar sarcolemma and along the T-tubules. The impulse triggers a release of calcium ions from the adjacent sacs of the SR. The calcium ions combine with the troponin molecules in the thin filaments of the myofibrils. This takes place in the sarcolemma. Normally, the troponin molecules hold tropomyosin strands in a position that blocks the active sites of actin. Energized myosin heads represented by Melissa's hand socks of the thick filaments bind into the actin molecules in the thin filament. Once the active sites are exposed, <laughs> the myosin heads been pulling the thin the filaments past them. Each myosin in the sarcolemma, this process is called the excitation of the sarcolemma. The thin filaments are made up of three proteins, which are actin, tropomyosin, and tro troponin. Globular actin molecules are strung together to form two fibrous strands that twist around each other to form a bulk of each thin filament. Actin and myosin molecules are chemically attracted to one another. The thick filaments are made up of myosin molecules. The calcium ions that were released from the SR allow the tropomyosin to shift, which allows the active sites of active molecules to be exposed. This allows the thin, the thin filaments and the myosin heads to angle towards one another. When they bridge the gap between the myofilaments, the myosin heads are usually called cross bridges.
The energy required for muscle contraction is ATP. ATP are attached to the molecules by high energy bonds. When these are broken, the high energy bonds provide the energy needed to pull the thin myofilaments during muscle contraction. When the myosin binds to actin, the stored energy is released, and the myosin head goes back to its original position. This cycle repeats itself as long as ATP is available, and, actin act and actin's active sites are not blocked. After the SR releases the calcium ions into the sarcoplasm and immediately after it, it begins pumping them back into the sacs. The calcium ions are stripped off the troponin molecules and returned to the SR sacs because the active transport carriers of the SR have a greater affinity to calcium than the troponin molecules. Without the calcium bond to troponin, this allows the tropomyosin to block the active site. The muscle fibers may remain in contraction but forces outside the muscle fiber pull it into rela relaxation. Look at me like that. <laughs> okay, <wait. laughs> hey, your head's off.